support. And if I knew exactly what it was, I'd move it myself. But. Okay, now, d does, um, given, given that the chair um, didn't, um, didn't support the resolution, would some of the other members of the Regulation and Consents Committee like to move and second the motion? Um, Glenn Livingston moved, seconded by uh, Ali Jones. So, um, so I'll open it up for questions. And perhaps if I could um, start, I was um, a little um, concerned at the view that this doesn't uh, move uh, some of the... Um, well, I was a bit surprised to see a reference to the intensification of um, gaming machine sites in the Addington area as relating to the Addington Raceway, because the Addington Raceway is a place where gambling takes place as a matter of course, but only when it's being used as a raceway. It's not, they're not available generally at the site. People don't go there. So to use the, um, you know, the um, other uh, hotels and that in the um, Addington area, I would have thought that this was a great a, a, um, opportunity to move nine machines out of the Shirley area, which is, has got quite a number of machines, and move them to an area where gambling only takes place a few times a year. This is Vivian. Do you want to introduce? Um, my understanding is that the new facility that the New Zealand Racing Board are going to set up will actually be open every day. It won't just be open when the um, raceway is open. Um, and, and the Twiggers stand. But people, I mean, it's a destination. It's not, I mean, to compare it to the all the hotels down Lincoln Road that have gaming machines, to me, that doesn't, that doesn't feel like it's an intensification of that area. It actually is a gambling location. I mean, I'm, well, I, I had missed the point that it was going to be open every day. But um, I still don't think that it, it really is relevant that there are other machines in Lincoln Road. That this is not part of the Lincoln Road environment. It's in proximity, but it's not close. Um, what, what did come out of the Regulation and Consents Committee meeting was that um, what, and this was from the Problem Gambling Foundation, that what happens that when some of the machines are getting ready to jackpot, people do go from premise to premise, that I appreciate that this one may be a bit more removed from some of the other premises as those located in Shirley, but that did come up um, as a comment made for moving the machines. Okay. Um, Ali, Glenn, Dave? Um, notwithstanding what uh, the Mayor has just talked about, um, could you also just explain the issue with regards or the issue around uh, the council policy the sinking lid policy, which not only relates to the number of machines, but also talks about the number of venues, um, as far as whether it's reduced in the access. My understanding was that it was open, um, you know, more often too, or than the mayor suggesting. But the increase in the number of locations is, is as important. Sorry, I'm answering your own question. Sorry, could you please just explain that? Um, so the policy currently provides that. The Council will not grant consent under Section 98 of the Gambling Act to allow any increase in Class 4 gaming venues or Class 4 machine numbers except in the circumstance set out below, and, and this doesn't come within that circumstance. What? Um, so there, there's two aspects. One is the number of machines and one is the number of venues. Um, and that did come out of the, the, uh, the, the committee meeting that there was a concern that it's not just the number of machines, it is the number of venues, because of the availability of venues, not just the number of machines. But, I mean, Shirley has got O'Shea's, um, Shirley TAB, Stock Exchange. There are 18 machines at, at the Shirley TAB are part of a high-intensity gaming strip. I mean, it does seem to me that that's more problematic 
than to have machines at Addington Raceway. Anyway, Glenn, um, Dave. Um, I, I voted against this um, resolution for a number of reasons. Sorry, just a quiet point of order. Again, I asked this last time, is this question or debate? I just need clarification, mm. because I don't know when to debate if it becomes questioning. No, 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 it's uh, a question. It's question well, time. OK. Well, I suppose I'm going to be more debating the issue than yeah. raising okay. the question. All right. Question? Thank you. Um, just in simple terms, they want to take a, a venue where they've got 18 machines, split it in two and move nine to the, to the raceway. So if, if we were of a mind to grant consent, on what basis could we, we say to any other operator, you can't split your machines down the middle or take three and put them at a cafe in another neighbourhood? Is, is there any risk around a precedent that this would create? And you know, I'm just trying to understand, given that we have had previous requests, what this would do to our existing policy if we were of a mind to grant it. I think any decision that you decide to make that is contrary to the existing policy has the potential to dilute that policy subsequently. Um, and that's obviously a matter that you would have to take into account when you were making a decision. I guess I was more <coughs> trying to understand, like, if it got challenged, like, from a legal point of view, and, you know, say another group came up and said, well, we want to move nine from here back into the central city or over to this other area, are, are we in a, in, a, in a weaker position to say no if we've approved this today? Well, I mean, every decision to grant consent that that is inconsistent with the policy, has, you know, it's a case-by-case -case decision, but and at the moment when you look back, you've, got, you've granted consent in two cases, and in, two, in the most recent case, two recent cases, you haven't granted consent. So, I mean, the, the answer to that question is yes and no, you know. It, People will argue that it has done it. If you do grant consent, people will argue that it does create a precedent. The policy doesn't actually make provision. Uh, there's no nothing in the policy that actually refers specifically to this sort of application. The, the, policy, that's correct. the policy is silent on moving machines, but the policy does, you know, doesn't permit any increase in the number of venues or machines. The policy will be up for review next year because it has to be reviewed every three years, and you will need to take a new provision in the Gambling Act into account which provides for the relocation of gaming machines. We didn't refer to that in this report because it doesn't cover the situation here at all, but you will need to take that into account next year. But, so what, but you, you keep referring to this as a new venue, even though on that site there are pre-existing machines? No, there's no... There's no gambling machines at Eddington Raceway. There's no None. gaming machines, no. They gave up their licence um, some time ago. So they used to have machines. They didn't, for whatever reason, renew the, as I understand it. Is that correct? Yes, my understanding was the Metropolitan Trotting Club at Eddington Raceway did have um, a number of machines there and they took them out. They did apply, that was one of the cases where they did apply to get consent for the machines. Um, that's at paragraph 4.3 of the report. But that consent wasn't granted. So when did the legislation come in between then? Was so that between the two? So the Gambling Act came into force? In 2003. They decided not to renew their licence because they weren't operating their machines. Yeah. And then in 2000, so that their licence was cancelled in October 2004. In 2010, they subsequently approached the council to gain a new territorial authority consent to locate gaming machines at Addington Raceway. This application was declined. But if they had maintained the, the machines that they had there in the past, they would have had 18 machines at that location. That's right. Yep. Just two quick questions. Just 
So the only other venue in New Zealand in a, in a racing capacity that has gaming machines is Alexandra Park in, in, in Auckland. So are those machines open seven days or are those open or used just on race days, do you know? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. no, but, uh, I'm not aware of, of the days of the week that those are particularly utilised. Okay, thank you. Phil? Um, can I just ask you about, to clarify the policy from my, my, so from my information. So, <clears throat> in fact, along Lincoln Road, um, by the way, the, the name of the street is it's Jack Hinton Drive too. Not Hilton. It's nothing to do with the Hilton. <laughs> Hinton. So um, <clears throat> there's 30, looks like there's um, 46 gaming machines along Lincoln Road already in Addington. And if this proposal went ahead, there'd be something like nearly 64 within, the, you know, within this half kilometre radius just about. So is there, is there anything in our policy um, with regard to restricting like the number of um, gaming sort of outlets in, in one area, given that in fact the intensification of them is more likely to um, lead to more, more, more social problems? There's no density provision. No, there is no density provision in the policy. So in fact they could all be in one little gaming area in Eddington and there's nothing in our policy that precludes that. Thank you. Uh, Tim, did you? Oh, no. no, you've already yeah. had yours. Um, Jimmy? Uh, one question. Uh, because uh, based on current uh, gaming policy, you know, thinking policy is not allowed to relocate to some uh, venue, I'm, I'm uh, uh, you know, the assumption if uh, today a council, you know, vote against the uh, staff or committee the recommendation, is there any the legal liability or not? Well, well, the only legal risk really is you know, judicial review proceedings at the, the council of the council's decision to grant the consent. Can I ask a question about um, why it is that we can't uh, permanently reduce the machine numbers to nine at Shirley if we were to go down this path? Well, my understanding is there's no statutory provision that allows us to take that territorial authority consent away once it's been granted unless that licence for that venue is surrendered. So, so um, if it's surrendered then that venue no longer has consent or a venue licence. So if a new operator took over those um, that property then they could install 18 gaming machines. I, could I just make one other clarification that um, the applicant made at, at the committee meeting, and that relates to paragraph 4.9 of the report. And they did note in their deed of undertaking that if the number of, um, if, if, if they did vacate the premises at the Shirley TAB and another um, operator took over that premises and they increased the number of gaming machines back up to 18, then under the deed of undertaking, which is set out in the attachment to the report, the um, New Zealand Racing Board would withdraw the nine machines from Addington so there would be no increase in the number of machines. So are you saying that, that if we were to grant this consent that we would have to um, meet what you've set out in 4.5.1, 2 and 3, which is we have to um, identify the inconsistency, the reasons for the inconsistency, and then any intention, well, I, I don't think that it's um, an intention to actually amend the policy, but it is to find... Um, but you, yeah, so your advice is, is that it doesn't... and at the, Our existing policy does not allow us to make this... Um, proposal, but that we would have to explain um, why this decision was inconsistent with our policy. That's right. So you need to follow the process in Section 80 of the Local Government Act to make a decision that's significantly <coughs> inconsistent, and you need to um, would need to address those three matters in 4.5. Okay. So, um, and would, would um, in, in terms of the inconsistency, it's increasing 
um, venue and numbers, but in terms of the numbers, the deed of undertaking would be enforceable as between us and the Addington Raceway, so that they would have to... Um, well, yes, I mean, it would be enforceable as any deed of undertaking would be enforceable. I'm not quite sure how we would enforce it, but that's, you know, that it's more like a gentleman's agreement, I suppose, but... Well, no, a deed of undertaking has either got a legal status or it hasn't. Well... Are you saying that a deed of understanding would not be legally enforceable as between the council and the Addington Raceway? Or the Metropolitan Racing Board, or whatever it's called? It's uh, between the New Zealand Racing Board. Well, yeah. For the purposes... No, yes, I'm, it would be enforceable. It would be, yeah. Sorry, Tim and then Ali. Um, we talk all through here with regards to the Addington Raceway, so... But you're saying that the, the, the machines would be open to the public for seven, seven days a week. So technically we're talking about a bar, are we, in the, in the complex that's actually going to be open? Rather than the raceway, which we kind of... So, uh, From my understanding of um, NZRB and um, Mr True when he spoke was that they would be seeking to put those machines um, in a room which will be... Um, form part of the, the Twiggers lounge type area and that they would be accessible to the public on days which didn't include race days. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Ellie? I want to go back to the issue about density which the policy doesn't address. Would it be fair to say that the part of the policy that talks about not creating new venues and, and even you know moving them and creating new venues is one way to control density, even though there isn't a specific uh, component of the policy that refers to density? So if you were moving, for example, in this, exact exa in this case, you were moving them from Shirley into an area where there are already a lot, you could be stopped from doing that because you want a new venue and that isn't allowed for in the policy. Yes, that was a roundabout way of asking. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, the, the policy's quite short, so I mean, it's the, yeah, it's silent on density, but it just That's control. Why yeah. All right. Any more questions? All right. So um, we've got a mover and a seconder, so we'll have the debate now, um, and I'll take Dave first because I. Um, oh. Missed them out before. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this is, is quite a difficult situation in that um, I see this as quite positive in, in reducing the sorry in reducing the um, density of machines in the Shirley area. We are talking a strip there of less than 150 metres. That has 54 machines. Mm -hmm. If we are talking about intensifying the Addington area, we are talking about putting nine machines into an area where gaming machines are probably spread over a two or three kilometre strip of, of Lincoln Road. Mm. Um, so I, I supported the, the, uh, the notion, the policy at the moment does not provide any reason particularly why we can't do this. Uh, we obviously have to make uh, justify our decision under section 94, was it? Um, 80. But equally importantly, um, I look at the, the issue of community funding in, uh, in the city. A and as a council, we are continually reducing our level of uh, support to community uh, groups in, in, in our direct funding. And whether we like it or not, the bulk of uh, funding for community groups does actually come out of, uh, out of the um, gaming machine industry. Um, I don't see this as um, increasing the number of machines. In fact, we're not. We are just uh, um, transferring to, to the different part of town. And in fact, I think we are doing the community quite a, a uh, service in the um, Shirley area by reducing the intensification in that very concentrated area. Um, as I said, I do have quite a concern for the um, ability of our community to seek funding for our, um, our community organisations, our sports groups, which now are predominantly funded by the gaming industry. So on that respect, I'm not hugely um, 
well, I'm torn between two worlds, I suppose. I have a strong connection with that uh, side of our community and I, I uh, recognise the difficulties that a lot of these groups now are facing with um, funding, particularly there's more and more activities coming on stream and the competition for funding is, is great. So personally, I, um, I want to see the availability of um, funding for these groups not be affected in any material way, so I don't personally have a great uh, uh, support for a sinking lid policy much below what we've got now. So for those reasons, uh, I, I oppose the um, resolution as it stood and would be quite happy to um, make an amendment that um, this proposal be allowed. Yeah, I think I think what we'll do is we'll do six point two separately, and if if there, is, I, I think that further work would have to be done given the advice that we've had on section eighty. If the council was um, of a mind to grant the consent, then it would have to be we, we would have to get a further report. So, um, if if people are of a mind to um, uh, uh, to grant the consent, then it does actually require another report to come back with how we comply with section 80. Um, that's my view of it. So um, I would say vote against that if if you are a, if you want to have the next step of granting the consent. Um, Glenn, thank you, Mick. I urge you um, all to uphold this policy. If there's one good thing the previous council did, it was actually to uphold this. It had a very strong position on it. The consistency is needed uh, with the policy and the policy's actual integrity needs to be maintained. Relocation actually would serve to shift the problem. You might hear some arguments about any um, purported financial benefits to the community through the Braden Heathcote Board uh, deputation and through other research uh, that's been given. We know that the financial multiplier effect of addictive gambling outstrips any financial gain from poking machines. There's hard data that will support that. On page 70, the uh, proposal to grant the consent, which the staff don't advise, uh, would contradict the policy by inference to relocation. So my view on this would be that when it does come time to review the policy, that we in fact make explicit uh, relocation. This would set a precedent. People would refer to the Shirley versus Addington case or whatever. I don't think it, it would be a wise move. So those are my uh, my main points on this. Why would you do poking machines to a poorer community? Uh, how does that actually advance community building in our city at this time? Thanks. Um, Ali? Thank you. Um, I endorse uh, what What's your name again? Glenn. Just said. Um, <laughs> with, with two in. Thanks. Um, that's a joke. Uh, this is about creating a new venue, actually, and the advice we received, this is very similar to the conversations we had during the, the committee meeting, but the advice we've received and the information from Problem Gambling um, and the chair of the local community board made it clear that creating a new venue goes against the sinking lid policy, the strong sinking lid policy. Um, we will also advise that it makes it will make no difference, very little if any difference to the Shirley area, with the large number there already, um, and uh, you know people move along the line and look for the jackpots, and that will continue. But if machines are moved from there, we will have another venue. Um, we're sending a bad message by opening another venue. This is a way of creating more places for people to gamble, and that's not what the sinking lid policy is all about. And I'm all for revisiting policy if there's a reason to revisit policy. There's no point in enforcing it for the sake of enforcing it. But the time to look at this is coming, and it's coming soon. So I strongly urge you to uh, endorse the committee decision and vote that way. And let's wait to have the bigger discussion around this when the time is right soon. Jamie. Um, I'll keep this short and sharp, like I endeavour to be. Um, look, ultimately, I, uh, I don't buy the community. <laughs> I don't buy the community good argument. Um, look, at the end of the day, it's robbing Peter to pay Peter. Um, secondly, around this, we have a sinking lid policy. 
I endorse the sinking lid policy, so I won't have any support in uh, not adhering to the sinking lid policy. Pretty simple. Very good. Short and sharp. Um, uh, Paul. I, I actually hear what David's saying with regard to uh, community funding, but um, uh, you know, sporting events, because obviously a lot of these uh, these funders actually do support um, sports events, but I liken it to the tobacco industry, I liken it to the liquor industry that have now been banned from sponsoring sports events. They, you know, you're, you're supporting something that actually has a, a massive issue in our community, and uh, I, 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 I struggle to actually uh, go against some of the things that actually restrict us from doing it, uh, and, and like just to move from one lot one side of town to the other, I think it's a, a real problem. So uh, I won't be supporting this here uh, today. And I think um, we need to send a clear message. We're just not going to tolerate. We're going to do what we said we're going to do and have the sinking lid, and let's just sink the lid. Yanni. Thank you. Um, I just want to make several points to this as well without repeating everything that's been said. Um, but the first really important point for me is that uh, actually what we know is that this is a redistribution of money. It comes in from the poorest people in our society and generally ends up with those who are the most affluent. So those who can least afford it generally pay more for those that actually could afford it. And that has been proven through the research that has been done as well. And I know in my ward, in Limwood, which has one of the highest number of machines and also the highest uh, amount of revenue, very little of that money is going back into that local community. It goes to the other suburbs. It goes to the... Uh, the Maryvales and the Fendletons and, and other areas. So... You just lost Jamie. <laughs> Understand the dynamics of how the, the, the pokey machine business works and what it does to lower socioeconomic communities. The second point I want to make is that um, the problem I have with this request for relocation is that if we approve this today, I cannot, in future, say to anyone else who's got these gaming machines, sorry, you can't move three over here, you can't move four over there, and suddenly you get a widespread, uh, I think, dispersion of the, uh, or a, a widespread uh, issue of these machines moving all around the city, which becomes incredibly hard to control, which I don't think does us any favours at all. So I think we have to stay true to the policy. I totally concur that there is a review coming up that is the time to have these major conversations about the principles. At the moment, the principle of our policy is a sinking lid. This does anything but create a sinking lid, and I think we should stand firm with where we're at. Phil. Thank you. Um, I want to support the view of our community board, and um, our community board chair presented this to the committee. And so I'm supporting the, 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 the uh, staff recommendation and the committee recommendation. And it's basically, look, please don't load uh, Addington with a whole lot more social problems than we've already got. We're just managing to get rid of the synthetic drugs industry off, off Lincoln Road. And if, if this goes ahead, there'll be 64 um, machines within Addington. It is still Addington. And basically, we're, we're not, there's no point in just shifting the problem from one suburb to another. Um, there was reference to this as like the gaming industry. I take exception to the term industry. Industry is usually about doing something productive. This is incre incredibly destructive. So um, I'm just urging councillors all to um, vote for to support the staff and committee recommendation. Uh, Andrew? Yeah, I'll also be um, supporting the staff and committee recommendation. We have a, a good policy here which is there for good reasons. Um, the result of this would be to increase the number of venues, which is clearly totally against the policy. In the context of community funding, I, I certainly don't buy the argument that we should be supporting gambling in order to support a, a funding stream to the community. And in fact, I'm aware of a number of community groups that, um, as a, a matter of conscience, will not apply to, ga to gambling trusts and gaming trusts for money, even though they need that money, um, because they're very aware and cognizant of the damage that gambling does in our communities. Um, additionally, um, I'm mindful of the view of the community board and the committee recommendation and, yes, yeah, certainly um, won't be supporting the increase in the number of venues today. Any other? Uh, um, Jimmy Chen. Thank you. I also support the staff in the uh, committee the, uh, recommendation. The reason is very simple. Because of this policy, the gambling the, uh, policy, you know, 
was established by the council, by the mayor and the council, maybe previous council, council, etc. So we should be take a lead, you know, to comply with the, this policy. Otherwise, how do we to be a good role model, to be a good pattern for the community, for the uh, residents? So that's very, very uh, important, not any uh, excuse. So that's the main reason I support staff and uh, the committee the recommendation.